Hey everyone, geophysicist Stefan Burns here. We have just had a huge explosion on the sun, a 3.3 M-class flare, though the numbers are deceiving. This was one of the biggest explosions on the sun in quite some time. You see that occur from beyond the limb of the sun. So on the other side, though this sunspot is soon to rotate into view, this is the eastern limb of the sun solar coordinate system. And this was such a powerful explosion that that plasma that started to push out after the main burst, the main coronal mass ejection launch, was still energized enough to register as a 3.3 M-class flare. The second highest category for solar flares only being exceeded by X-class flares. And well, we could have some X-class flares coming in in the next few days and probably within the next week, 10 days, because we have a convergence coming up on the 18th, 19th, and 20th of January. We can roughly estimate the position of the sunspot group based off of this explosion. It's probably about 24, 48 hours before it rotates to the limb and then starting to be into view. So in about seven to eight days, it's going to be Earth center indirect, right in that time frame. Well, that is when we also have the new moon and new moons and full moons, including quarter moons, are already heightened energy moments in time, especially new moons and full moons. Well, at the same time as this, we also have the superior conjunction of Mercury. Right now, Mercury is on the far side of the sun swinging around. It will be exactly on the other side with the new moon, also conjunct Pluto, and J Jupiter in opposition will have this sunspot group exactly in line as well. So it looks like things are really going to ramp up around the 18th through 20th of January. And I wanna show you exactly what this explosion looked like because it was a big one. You can see it very nicely with our chronograph view, our differential. Check this out. This was a huge explosion right here. Boom shakalaka. That is a large coronal mass ejection. If that had been aimed towards Earth, we'd be looking at least at a G3 geomagnetic storm, very likely G4, that would be my estimate. So this is clearly a very significant sunspot group that is very active. And we've been talking about this for a while because we've been having this convergence of planetary energies with this grand planetary alignment with Jupiter, Earth, the Sun, Mercury, Venus, and Mars all in a line. We also have Saturn and Neptune conjunct in the sky at this moment in time. And well, this is interesting because we saw exactly with the conjunction of Venus and Mars, this sunspot group wake up in the first place and launch a massive explosion and a chromal mass ejection outwards. There we see that. So again, Venus is faster than Mars. Sun's also moving here, but relative, we keep it fixed. Right as they go conjunct, within arc seconds, boom, we get that coronal mass ejection. This was back on the 7th of January. So now some time, and, and on the 8th of January. So some time has elapsed now. The sunspot's getting closer and closer to Earth. We see Mercury appearing right there. So that is Mercury coming in for that superior conjunction. And we can look at that with our C3 chronograph view. Here we see Mercury and we see Venus now having emerged from behind the sun. She will start to become an evening star at this point as she reaches towards her greatest elongation. Mercury will also be performing that after its superior conjunction, its Kazemi, right around that new moon. So you can see Mercury is a fast mover and it's getting pretty quickly uh, close to the sun at this moment in time. So right around the 18th, 19th of January, that is going to be active. And we can see that this was a big explosion by looking at our 211 angstrom view of the sun, which we can see right here. We, this is our 211 angstrom view color with our 193 angstrom imagery. For the experts out there, we see a coronal hole that is falling in front of that. But check out how all of a sudden all that plasma leaves. So we don't have the best imagery because it was on the far side of the sun. But you can see that all of a sudden you had this big shift in the corona right there with that explosion, which is a good indication that this was a big explosion. So if that had been earth facing, I'm sure that would have been an X-class flare because it registered as a long duration 3.3 M-class flare, even though it was from beyond the limb. We can look at our X-ray flux uh, for the past seven days just to see how significant that was. And here that is. 
So we see that we've had basically flat conditions for a while, just in the C-class range. We're looking at the highest vibrational wavelength of light, excluding gamma rays with our X-ray flux here. And all of a sudden we immediately leapt up and you can see it's a long duration because it is still ongoing right now as I record this. So here's our six hour view, occurred just about six hours ago and it's declining steadily down, but it was a long duration uh, M, M flare and that caused a R1 radio blackout over the Pacific Ocean. We can look at that with our D region absorption model right here. And you'll notice that our uh, ionosphere has basically been fairly low charge. So we have been in a geomagnetic storm for the past 24 hours, G2 to G1 levels. So that's been enhancing flux. But in terms of uh, this sort of light radiation hitting it's been fairly low because the sunspot activity and the solar flare activity has been low up until this moment. Here we go. There is that 3.3 M class flare, long duration, really charging up that part of the earth, which is the sunlit side. Of course, when that occurs, light photons aren't bent by magnetic fields or gravity. They just race straight to their objective. And you can see that it's tapering off Asia, Australasia, all that being hit as well by that. So that is the ring of fire being hit with a lot of highly vibrational light photon energy from the sun. A lot happening and a lot more to come. We see our real time solar wind here. This is our geomagnetic storm that we've been in. The solar wind conditions have been enhanced. So we have our interplanetary magnetic field up here. Anytime you see this light purple that indicates a strong connection to Earth's magnetic field by the solar wind. So you see that we initially entered into that, had a little bump in our activity. This is our KP index, a measure of geomagnetic volatility. These are swings in Earth's magnetic field, which is the protective magnetic field around our planet. Thank God we have it or else things wouldn't be that pleasant here because of all the radiation coming in from the sun, coming in from our interstellar and cosmic environment. Well, when we do get these solar storms to hit, it causes Earth's magnetic field to vibrate, to oscillate, sometimes even crunch down to get a lot smaller and then it'll expand back outwards. Well, we see that we started to get this to really get enhanced when that solar storm came in. We see the interplanetary magnetic field jumped up uh, really quickly. We had a lot of good connection. Immediately went to G2 levels here with a KP index of six. The scale goes to nine. Once you're at a five, you're at a G1 level. And that's what we got back to after a little cool off period here. So we ran back to a 4.67, five, and then 5.33. Now the solar wind is starting to abate down and as a result, geomagnetic volatility is decreasing. We see that we had two jumps in the solar wind velocity here. We started off at just about 400 or so, and then we went up to 500, and then even up to about 550 or so. Solar wind density, about average, a little bit less than average, I would say. Average is like maybe three or four, uh, and it is starting to go down now. So. That is an important factor that we watch in terms of earthquake activity. When the solar wind density is very low, we seem to have more earthquake activity. We also seem to have more earthquake activity when there are significant planetary alignments. And we had a magnitude 6.4 earthquake hit Indonesia yesterday. So that is a big earthquake that occurred exactly when this alignment was active. It is still active right now. We can check that out with our solar system scope application here. This is our planetary alignment. This is a very significant alignment because Jupiter is at opposition. That was exactly yesterday, meaning if you went outside at night, the very bright object that you saw in the sky was Jupiter uh, because Jupiter will be the brightest thing for sure during opposition, especially when Venus and Mars and Mercury are all on the other side of the sun, meaning that if you're looking at the sun, you're effectively looking at them. They're out during the daytime. You're not going to see them at night, though that will change as Venus moves ahead. Uh, we also have, as you see, Saturn and Neptune conjunct, and that will be exact for Earth geocentrically in February, Pluto and also Uranus in harmonic aspects to all of this. So the entire solar system is perfectly geometrically aligned right now, which is something that happens, but not like this that often. Last time we had this alignment in particular, this exact, 1936. So let's move forward here. And we can see this Mercury Kazemi come into effect. So here's Mercury right there. And as I move the Earth forward in its orbit, you see that we have Mercury all of a sudden now in this alignment with the Earth and the Sun. And there is our new moon. So we still have Venus and Mars close by. 
And here is our Earth, Moon, Sun alignment also with Mercury. And if we look further out, you see that this is also in alignment with Pluto with Jupiter in opposition. So this is a big, powerful energy signature indicating that things are going to probably be bigger and more powerful than you would think at first glance. If you didn't take this into account, uh, for example, if we have a solar storm that comes in and the forecast that's being issued is like, hey, G2 storm expected, I'd probably bump it up to a G3 because this sort of signature from my research and from me watching this now for a few years is the type of signature that will lead to things being bigger and more bombastic than they would have otherwise. And well, we're seeing that sunspot group on the far side now having blasted off two big solar storms. And it looks like the last one, the one that just occurred was bigger than the first one, which was on the 8th of January, exactly when Venus and Mars went conjunct. So this is quite significant. And lastly, we'll look at our astronomical chart for the new moon to see this in effect because it really makes it all clear. So here we have our true sky positions for uh, the Earth geocentrically involving all 13 constellations, including a Fucus here. And we see our congregation of planets and the sun here right at the boundary of the constellation Sagittarius and also Capricorn. So we're not doing zodiac signs here. This is true sky positions and constellations. We see Jupiter there in opposition. Effectively, Earth is right in the middle for a geocentric chart. So you see here is Mars, there is Venus, and then we have, of course, the sun and moon conjunct for that new moon. And look right next to it, we have Mercury with that superior conjunction, and then we have Pluto just a degree or two off from that. So a very tight cluster. You see all that occurring there, maybe in like five, six, seven degrees, probably about seven degrees, all of them tightly clustered with Jupiter in opposition. And at the top, we have Saturn and Neptune, as you can see, within just a couple degrees geocentrically. And we have Uranus in trines to all of these points. So this is participating, this whole congregation here is participating in this minor grand trine, as we call it, with Pluto, Saturn, Neptune, and Uranus. And then we have these squares there from Chiron. We have this opposition from Jupiter. This is really beautiful planetary geometry. And it does look like the type of signature that you would get for often significant solar activity. So again, I think we're very likely to have a big solar storm impact or multiple. I would not be surprised if we get multiple big coronal mass ejections launched toward the, towards the Earth right around this time frame of the 17th through the 21st of December when that sunspot group is going through Earth center and direct because we have the Mercury superior conjunction, which often lines up with that sort of activity because it's so close to the sun on the far side. It seems to interact with the electric circuit of the sun in interesting, unique ways. We have the lunar alignment too. We have this planetary, planetary congregation. We have the overall geometry. We know that sunspot group is active. It first woke up with that Mars Venus conjunction. It's likely going to uh, be very active on the earth facing side. We just saw it have a huge explosion. And so everything is lining up at this moment in time for the 17th through the 21st of January. And as soon as that sunspot group rotates into view, we're probably gonna have an increase in our X-ray flux, more ionization of the ionosphere, a charging up of the global electric circuit. Because we have just gone out of a geomagnetic storm, we're gonna have the radiation belts recharge because they will get enhanced after a solar storm impact and a geomagnetic storm. So everything is queuing up for that time period in January, and I will keep you up to date here on the channel if you subscribe. So that's your space weather report going forward. I have been your host, Stefan Burns. Thank you all so much for watching. Please smash that thumbs up button to help the channel grow. It really does a lot. We started off 2025 at about 150,000 subscribers, ended the year at about 650,000. So that is incredible. Thank you all so much for your support. I am dedicated to bringing you the information and the news as to what is happening here on Earth energetically with the sun, with our cosmos day by day. So subscribe if you want to stay up to date. 
And also in addition to that, I also have a web store where I sell a variety of holistic wellness products and official channel merchandise. This is earthevolution.com slash store. And we see a variety of all organic herbal tea blends here. We make and mix this ourselves, my dad and I, this is a joint operation. I helped, uh, I, br I brought him in to help me out last year. It's been really fantastic. So we source all our ingredients, make them, mix them, package them, ship them out to you direct. Um, United States only, by the way, but our spirituality, our herb coffee, our top sellers, they're both in stock. We just mixed up a new batch of herb coffee. Our festivity is in stock, our latest tea blend. This is amazing for this time of year when it's cold out and you just want something that's flavorful and kind of cozy and comforting. It's caffeine free. It's not gonna get you all zipped up. It's great at night. Great when if you have people over, you want something nice to drink that's non-alcoholic, but really flavorful. And you can, it's basically like a mold tea. You can make a mold wine out of this if you want. You can even brew it, let the grounds, all the stuff cool down, blend it up, add that to a cake mix. It makes amazing cake. So it's multi-purpose, six ounces, super good for you too. I mean, this is really good stuff. Uh, I think it's probably maybe our best tea blend that we've made, in definitely in terms of flavor. Uh, but there are others like spirituality, which are fantastic, helping you to connect to your psychic senses and to awaken those gifts. It enhances your dreams. Some people even report uh, Billy to like suddenly astral travel with the spirituality if they're very sensitive. Great for when these energies are heightened because it helps you connect to some of these more etheric realms. And our herb coffee is fantastic too. That is a 50% coffee mix with also chicory root, dandelion root, and lion's mane mushroom. So really good for neuropotentiation, for focus, to get things done, but keeps you creative. And being half caffeine, it's also something good to drink when there is geomagnetic volatility, which enhances cortisol secretion already. So it's kind of stressful on the body. So caffeine does that as well, coffee does that. So if you still wanna have your coffee, then this is a good time to drink herb coffee instead because you still get that, that focus and that zip and it tastes really, really good. Super high quality coffee, shade grown, organic Peruvian, single origin, the whole deal. We don't skimp, but it is half caffeine because it makes up 50% of the product. So the official channel merchandise is also here. The Boom Shaka Laka hoodie is our newest. That is in stock going up to size 3XL. The Cosmos Within shirt is amazing. Great energy and feng shui to it and so much more. So that's all available on the website at earthevolution.com slash store. Thank you all so much for watching. Wishing each and every single one of you well. Please take care of yourselves. I'll be back with more updates as necessary. You can also follow me on Twitter X, which is at Stefan Burns Geo. That's also linked in the video description as well. Hope to see you there. I post updates in between my videos on X. So that is also a great resource for all of you. Thank you so much. Have a great day and I'll see you all in the next video.